Good morning, vlogsters. How are you? Man. I don't stress about money. I mean, I guess sometimes I do, and I've known to do in the past, so I'm not excusing my behavior. <laughs> but it's just so weird because I think the thing that's like stressing me out the most is that, hi, let me not start off that way. It's just that's what was on my mind and made me pick up the phone. Good morning. I hope you're all doing well today. Hopefully I'll be able to post this today. So today is uh, Saturday, the 9th of May. Uh, tomorrow's Mother's Day. We're actually gonna go and venture out for the first time to mom's favorite steakhouse, which opened last Monday. Um, they are keeping uh, CDC social distancing um, 65 people per restaurant. They're not putting any two tables next to each other. I'm so grateful that they actually just opened this like secondary dining area because now they can actually do this. Um, all of their waits, wait staff will be wearing protective PPE equipment, which is really great. But she is just like, when they started opening up for take home, we did a take home, but it just isn't the same that, you know, like, especially with steak, steak will continue to cook in the take home container. And we don't live like everything in Raleigh is 10 minutes away, but having your food sit in a container for 10 minutes plus however long it was in the container from the restaurant to the bagging, the bagging to the car, like that whole thing. So it just isn't the same as you guys know, and not to complain, you know, just it's Mother's Day and we want to do what we can do. So, um, that's what our plans are. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm supposed to remind Jimmy to call today at lunchtime to see if they're doing a uh, call ahead for tomorrow because they have such a limited number and tomorrow's Mother's Day. Um, we are not opposed to eating dinner at three o'clock in the afternoon because you know, like we, mom only eats one meal a day and sometimes it is before Jimmy goes to work. Um, cause you know, we'll just eat the other rest of the times of the day anyway. Um, so she's not opposed to eating at any time during the day. Um, and that kind of thing. It's really cold this morning. Yesterday morning, we had a frost warning. Um, this morning it is just around 50 degrees, which it's cool for me, cold for my family. Um, but we've had the heat on last night cause it dropped down really cold last night to like in the thirties, which is like, it's May dude. And I'm like, actually first I was like, oh, it's May. But then I was like, no, it's spring. I'm so excited. I don't know about you guys where you live, but between here and New York, I feel like I didn't have spring in like 10 years. Actually, it's probably even longer than that because it was when my dad was still alive. We were going basically from winter to summer. It seemed like we had like three days of spring weather. And when I was young, spring, of course, was like a whole season. You know, it started off freezing and then ended up warm, but the whole season was like, you know, uh, warm afternoons, cool evenings, cold nights, chilly mornings, like that kind of thing. Um, and it's just hasn't been like that for a very long time. And now we're actually having it, which is kind of amazing. Makes me think about like, uh, what we're, how much less we're polluting the atmosphere. And I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Farmer's Almanac would probably tell me otherwise, because they probably predict the weather, predicted this weather pattern, whatever. But let me take my first sip. Sometimes I make good coffee too. <laughs> this is good coffee this morning. Um, so for the real reason I picked up the camera is I, we had a live stream and we got a really generous donation and I could tell you it was about 28 days ago because, um, on my YouTube creator app, you can keep track of the 28 day revenue. And I know that I mentioned it in the past that, um, the revenue is, is coming down, is coming down between the whole COPPA thing, which was like the 
Children's Online Protection and Privacy Act lawsuit that the FCC, I think it was the FCC and uh, and the state of New York brought a suit against YouTube for um, selling children's information, but really they just settled to settle, but really it was really on the parents. Like when you hand your kid your device and tell them to go on whatever they're going on, um, it's just this whole thing. So anyway, they settled and it's like, we, we're getting, I don't know if we're getting less advertisers or they're taking more money. Um, they do send a lot of updates, but I told you I, I can't read like any lengthy, like I can, I'm, I'm an article kind of girl. Um, and for any long period of time and especially legalese. Um, but my revenue has really, really, really declined a lot. Actually, I'm on a 28 day, my 28 day revenue for this morning when I woke up is less than it was a year ago when I was had ha almost half the subscribers. So on viewership is like, basically my viewership is roughly the same my watch time is the same. Like these are the analytics that they give you, you know, like how long people are watching your videos and how many shares and how many likes and all these things. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's just really, really strange. And I don't stress about money and I'm not trying to tell you I'm quitting because I'm not quitting, but I am reevaluating how much work I'm putting into it not just the financial aspect like I do a lot of holes on my channel um, I do holes because they get a lot of views but they don't get a lot of advertising dollars I like make less money on holes but the way the algorithm works like the more s your views you get on your channel the more you likes you get on your channel the more they promote your channel so it's like a catch-22 I don't make as much money on the holes but I'll get promoted more on the holes. But I don't really know what's going on with my channel. Like, literally, I don't know what's going on. I talk to my other YouTuber friends and I'm like, are you noticing any difference? Is it, you know, is it kind of like it's just me? And I I could stop being a daily, the daily vlogger, but I really enjoy it. But like, you know, then I'm like, how much how much is it worth to me like it's not just the monetary it's the connections it's um and i don't want to stop my vlog channel but i might have to just start vlogging on my other channel it's just weird i, I don't know i don't know i i've just i guess what i wanted to pick up the phone with you this morning is to tell you that i don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only person stuck in their home during this challenging time who doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> but, um, mm, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot to try to figure out. Of course, I'll always let you guys know ahead of time. I want to just like cut it off and well, I shouldn't say that that's true definitely follow if you have all of notifications on both channels you can check the community chip pages basically there's a community tab on my channel you click on my face and it'll bring you to my channel page and then across the top is tabs that say stuff like about videos playlists and one of them says community and what I can do is I can post on the community page and and if you follow my feed you should get it in your like home page of your when you open YouTube but not always, so that's how you can find it if you don't get those notifications, if you don't get those messages from me, if you don't see my information on your page. Yeah, that's what I tried to say. Mm. I am looking forward to today. Jim said that we're going to work on the coffee bar today, which I'm really excited about. I don't know what all is all if that makes any sense i don't know what all we're going to be doing <clears throat> i 
had a thought last night and it's funny because I bought I hold a whole bunch of LTD commodity stuff yesterday and I actually have more LTD commodity stuff coming and if you've seen my kitchen tour you know I have a little black cabinet between my fixed counters and the three movable cabinets that create a counter by the kitchen table area which I just really call like a sideboard to me it reminds me of just a sideboard but you know we refer to them as the black and white cabinets I don't know that's just how they describe themselves anyway <laughs> um they're very long and they're low and they have like I have like a uh like a plate holder over it and some plate holders on the sides and I was like should I make that whole thing my coffee bar? Like people do have really grand coffee bars. I have a lot of things to make a grand coffee bar, but I just went ahead and I just bought this tabletop to go onto that little black island. It's hard when you have, excuse me one second. I'm sorry, that was a, excuse me. Okay, it's hard when you have like a ton of ideas and zero energy and not zero energy when you have your when your your ideas are dialed up and your body's dialed down <laughs> that's what I mean to say um, I have the want power but I don't have the willpower oh um, that's just kidding that's not what it is so but I just have so many ideas and I would like how do you put all these ideas into um, do I, you know, into fruition? Do I want it to be like French country? Do I want it to be farmhouse, French country, farmhouse? How can I combine these two styles uh, at a coffee bar? Obviously, I have them combined all over my house, but how do I combine the coffee bar? And then I realized something. There are some steadfast design rules, you know, like either take the symmetry or the rule of three or, you know, symmetry or odd numbers um, you know, there's all these different design rules, whatever, but it ultimately comes down to like you, what do you like? What do you think looks good to you? That's really what it comes down to. What do you want to achieve for the space? What do you want it to look like? What do, would you like it to look like for when your guests come over? That kind of thing. So that's really what it's ultimately all about. I have some ideas of decor and then I'm like, well, if I do the cup storage, then I wanted to, I won't have much room for much decor. I will have some room for some decor. So then I'm kind of like sketching different sketches out on paper and then, well, first I sketch them out in my mind and then I sketch them down on paper. And then I have like, you know, uh, the countertop and then we're like, okay, so the, obviously the curie has to go there. What else goes there? Do I put the two tier tray? Do I put the tray with all the, con the, the condiments on it? Well, that really has to go there because that's the coffee. You know, it's just like so much to figure out. And then like executing it. Executing it is the other huge part of it. Um, I have all these great little cute little storage baskets. Like I'm almost like do I take the doors off the cabinets and make it like open shelving? <laughs> so the thing that I was contemplating last night was, do I just make that whole entire three cabinet bank a coffee bar? And the only way that would really work is if I moved the plate holder and or painted the plate holder. And I know that this is gonna sound so dumb and some people are really not gonna like this answer. But I don't really care about those people. <laughs> I am so nostalgic when it comes to some things. I just am. I painted that with my dad. My dad actually put um, the dowels across. When I bought it, it didn't have any dowels across. It was just shelves, shelves and like an open side work. So my dad put dowels in there because when I first got the job at the group home, I told you about that teeny tiny apartment. There was no place to put dishes and food. Like there was just no storage. 
So we found this, and this is where we put our everyday dishes. We stacked our everyday dishes on this thing. So we needed to have a place for the plates to not fall over. My friend Joyce had given me this beautiful set of Gibson um, dishware when, I think it was for Christmas after I got married. I wanna say it was for Christmas after I got married. Cause it wasn't for my like shower or my wedding. That I can tell you. Um, and the problem, not the problem with it, it was absolutely perfect. It was a set, a service for six, but it was only a service for six. So, and when I went to go buy more, I couldn't find more in that same style. And I think I've mentioned this before, I have a huge family. Um, so here in Rolla, a service of six would probably be perfect. But when I was still in New York, and I was in New York for a long time after she gave me that, um, six wouldn't cut it on a Sunday, never mind a holiday. So one of the things that I invested in when my father was still alive and I re had started to redo my kitchen there at, in New York, um, was I invested in the Corel that I currently have. Um, it is the, it is sort of like one of their staple pieces. It's uh, coordinates in white. Basically it, um, my dad's big thing was, my brother had given us these Christmas Corel dishes. They gave to my parents back in the late eighties. And my father started using those every day because <clears throat> some plates, do I actually have, I actually have a charger here, so I can kind of use the charger to show you what I'm talking about. But some dishes have, you know, what am I trying to say? I'll, I guess I'll describe this one and then I'll show you, I'll, I'll just tell you, like, I'll have you imagine. Sorry, sorry. Don't put wood on plastic Ziplocs. Do the other way around. So I'll show you this charger. So this charger has what my dad used to call a well. It has like a lip and it has a well. Some plates, as you know, go just directly, um, they scoop from the edge to the middle and then they go flat in the middle and back up the edge. I guess that's like a normal plate. This is like another type of plate. I don't even know. But the Corel that my, the Christmas Corel that my brother had given us or given my parents um, was like this, had a well and all the original Corel did it. And my father started to really enjoy having the well to the point where we started using the Christmas dishes all year round. And what made them Christmas is with Corel, they were all white and they had like this band of color with like Christmas trees and reindeer. The dinner plates were red. The salad plates and bowls had like the green with the same pattern cut into it. And the coffee mugs were red. So it was like red and green and red and green. Um, so he really enjoyed that. And that was like what became a thing for him was like to have those plates. So when I was in the market to buy new plates, because of course, over the course of 20 years, plates break. You know, you don't have the full service anymore. Um, but also I just wanted to have like white. I... I know it's so boring to some people, but white is such a clean, I mean, there's a reason they serve food on white plates at restaurants because it's about the food, not about the plates. And one of the things that I loved and one of the reasons that I kept um, my mother-in-law's china is because it is just plain white with a platinum band around the end. And again, that is for the food like so that you can notice the food not the dishes um i think there's also a psychology to eating less when your plate isn't busy i don't know something like there's some weird psychology to it um i don't know i don't know if that's even a thing i know about the blue plates but that's that's something different but i feel like i heard somewhere that there was a psychology to it but Studies happen, studies come, studies go, somebody studies something new and it opposes the last study, whatever. But anyhow, I just really liked the white. So I was on the market to look for white Corel because then Corel was a big thing. My parents were very 
for it because the way it didn't uh, chip like other stoneware did and other ceramics did. Um, it was shatterproof. You could drop it and not have to worry about it so much. Not that it never broke, but more often than not, it would do that thing where it would just like spin, 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 spin. Anyhow, I found this. It had a well. It was white. It had a pretty edge too to make it like not so plain. Um, and I, I loved it. So what I did was I invested, I bought a service. I feel like that they were a service of 12. I think I bought two services of 12 so that I have 24 dishes because it sounds crazy, but if my, if my entire family actually, I don't even know if that's true anymore because Julie. I don't even think it's my entire family. I think it's my entire family that lived in New York. If my entire family that lived in New York, including Bobby, and when my Uncle Louie would come over, we would be 21 people. So we couldn't really get less than 24. Um, yeah, I think that that's right. 5, 9, 11, 15. No, it must have included Julie. It must have included Julie. Hold on. Let me do that right. Hold on. That's not right. 5, 9, 11. Bobby is 12. 15. And Uncle Louie was 16. So it must have been when my sister Julie lived at home. And then we have extended family and brothers from another mother's and in-laws and stuff. So yeah, I mean like for a, for a couple of years there, a standard Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas dinners were 21 people. And besides the fact that you have to use all those dishes for breakfast and then you have to wash them all so you use them again for dinner. <laughs> but anyhow, um, I'm going to remember why I started talking about this. I am. Um, don't go anywhere. Joyce gave me great. Okay. So anyway, Joyce gave me these plates that we had at the apartment that we were using. And they were thicker. So like the way I had to store them, we had to put those dowel rods in there. And because we, I built it with my dad and we painted it together, I just don't want to paint it over. I might in someday. But right now, I think... That things are just still, I'm settled here. I'm not trying to say I'm not settled here. But I still feel like the disconnect from my old house isn't quite complete. Um, the estate really just got settled, I want to say in August. Uh, September perhaps, maybe it was September, maybe it was August. Um, so I kind of feel like it take, it's going to take me some time to disconnect from that too. I have lots of things to remember my dad by, so it's not like it's just about that, but I'm back and forth. I'm like, it does, it is the only color on the walls. The walls are gray. The furniture is mostly black and white. The one exception besides that red shelf is the inside of the china cabinet in the dining room is red and the dining room table, which... I say dining room, but it's a kitchen. Sorry. <laughs> the back wall of the black cabinet, the black china cabinet in the kitchen is red. The dining room table is wood color. Um, but really all the rest of the furniture is either white, black, and gray. Like all the rest of the stuff. Um, I have some decor pieces that pop colors, but you know, mostly everything is just like that. So I am um, I don't know if I want to paint it let's put it that way but I do have that really cute coffee mug holder um, it's like a faux palette I got it at the 99 cent only store one of the hooks just broke like literally we were sitting in the living room and we weren't really using it because Jimmy had just hung it on screws 
like not mollies in the wall like hadn't really secured it much i said i don't want to use it regular because i don't want to risk pulling it off the wall i never even considered the other alternative but literally we're sitting in the living room and we heard like a coffee mug fall we're like what the heck nobody's even out there one of the hooks just broke like like look down and the coffee mug is sitting on the keurig and the hook is broken off and it was like how in heaven's name did that happen so we I, I wanted to like just buy the hook to replace it and they were not available for a hook um i ended up having to buy a big package of hooks um but to get that same one now i could have replaced all of the hooks on there but I liked it. I mean, they're not even, it's weird because I'm thinking like I would paint them black if I had my druthers, but, um, yeah, we just got a whole package of hooks. So then I was on Pinterest and I was like, look at all these coffee mug holders that you can make by just staining boards and, and putting hooks on them. Like that's not even a thing. Like I don't even have to have skills. It, oh, I don't have those skills. You guys don't have those skills. Literally just like a ruler and screwing like that's that's all the skills you need so we have all these one by twos that we bought uh when we were building out the closet and i was like we have so many left over because we were gonna we were actually going to build the front closet we ended up buying that system so much cheaper than it would have cost for the the lumber even though we had these one by twos that were dollar fifty each it, and now I have so many of them and nothing to do with them, but to buy the actual like plywood for that closet would have been more money. Um, so I have all these boards and I'm like, I could just cut them down and I could stain them. And then I've seen like, um, people do mug hooks this way. And then I saw this really great tutorial where somebody took the two just long boards and would put mug hooks this way. So I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. There's too many design things in my brain. And it's really weird because I'm like, I'm up here teaching you guys stuff when I suffer just as badly, if not worse sometimes, because it's not just like what I want from my home. It's also my job. So it's like double design brain. Like I have double design brain on my brain and I don't know how to deal with it, but mm. anyhow. Um yeah, so that's where I'm at. Um he's vlogging, doing Bible study and vlogging, and then I don't know if we're gonna eat breakfast before we start because Jim doesn't always like to eat breakfast first thing in the morning. Um or if we're gonna like start like cut and staining the wood so that we can at least get that drying. I don't really know. Um, but I'm definitely gonna share it with you either way, even if it's just like talking about it as I go kind of thing. I record some of it and talk about the rest. I don't really know. Sometimes doing the camera makes the job twice as hard and obviously it's two jobs at once because not only are you doing the construction, then you're doing like videography. So um, we'll do what we can do. We'll take you along always, right? We always take you along. Um, but listen, thank you again, all of you guys. You're so beautiful in the comments. You guys are so lovely to me. I. I'm not gonna cry. I really, I really wish I could do something other than words to tell you how grateful I am that you all are here and that you have my back and that I feel like you may continue to be here no matter what. So thank you all very much. And listen, as always, you guys take care. God bless. I'll see you next time. Bye.